that size instead of looking Welcome for Welcome to the March, what is it, 18th? Yeah. March 18th, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> March 18th, uh, Zoning Advisory Committee meeting of Hopkinton. Um, we have a few uh, members who might be late, um, but uh, I was hoping we could just do the minutes first, get that out of the way. Does anyone have any edits to those? No. Okay, good. Um, then, all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Any um, opposition? No. Nope. Any abstentions? No. Nope. Okay. Minutes approved. Um, I also wanted to give a brief update on what the zoning, uh, or the sorry, the planning board is doing in terms of public hearings on the zoning. Um, we do have um, some continued public hearings at the planning board um, next Monday, March 25th, and that starts at 7.30 or 7. Okay. 6.30 and then she just said that uh, the zoning portion was 7.30. 7.30, thank you. Um, so the zoning portion starts at 7.30. If any of you wish to be there to discuss any of the zoning, um, zoning proposals that we made, as well as some other ones that have come through citizen petitions, um, so you can, you can do that. It's probably going to last an hour to an hour and a half, 7.30 to 8.30 or 9. Okay, and next that's here. Month. That's here, that's right. Okay. Um, so I did not get as far on our matrix in compiling everyone's individual ratings as I had hoped to. I spent about five hours on it last night and today. And <laughs> Um, I, I will show you the tax revenue line and um, we can discuss that, but my recommendation is that we don't spend a lot of time discussing the rest of it because it's only partially filled out and, you know, in, in a business setting, I would have canceled this meeting. I would have said, okay, let's wait a few more days, let's reschedule the meeting so that we can discuss it when all the information can be presented fully. But um, obviously, in, in town, <laughs> the town um, it, we needed to hold the meeting, um, but I, I really feel like we cannot fully you know, explore this. Um, so you know, I'll go over to here and show you what we've got so far. Okay, I'm gonna blow this up a little bit. Is that gonna be too much? So, and um, Elise used color coding for hers, which is really good. I was gonna do that in a conditional sense once I got the whole compilation done as well. Um, there's, you know, as you can see, and this is tax revenue column was the one that several people left blank entirely because they didn't feel comfortable that they had enough knowledge to, to put a rating in here. Um, but uh, even with, you know, several ratings, we, we have a fairly good consensus on most of the tax revenue. On some of the other categories, I'm not seeing a lot of consensus. There's some things all over the place, some from low to high. And, um, but obviously, um, there, there is some consensus as well. So we'll have good discussions about those ones with the, the broad range of, of feelings. And I'm sure it's just people looking at it in a slightly different way point of view. <laughs> so, okay, so um, manufacturing um, category is rated in the medium, slight, you know, a little bit higher than the medium category for, um, for tax revenue. Um, and warehouse and distribution also medium. The laboratory research centers is considered a little bit on the higher side um, by the consensus thus far. And I am operating without 
ratings coming in from Ted or from John at this point. So we'll see if you know, they also have additional. Um, the office and the daycare were the two baseline ones that we all did together, so we, we we're forced into consensus here. <laughs> so, so we definitely have consensus on that one. <laughs> um, funeral home is in the medium range, but can be on the lower side. Building trade shop, medium. Hospitals, medium to high. And health services, medium. Um, landscaping business or storage and shipping, medium slightly lower. Um, then we've got retail, retail things, which um, everyone rated in the medium category. Zero for nonprofits. Entertainment, medium, medium high. That's, you know, so, so at least one person was thinking that this was on the higher side. Um, and then we've got the health club, recreational uses, and so on, all in medium categories. And hotel. Yes, go ahead. So when we're talking about tax revenue, we're talking mm -hmm. about the sales of goods and services as well as the taxable real estate, right? We're talking about, I think, mostly real estate. Does this, so, we don't have a local sales tax, so. Well, hotels have the possibility of having a local sales tax. But right now they don't. We don't have a local sales tax for it, do we? We don't have a hotel either. We don't. No. <laughs> we have a tax. We don't have the hotel. Oh, we do right. have a tax. We do we have a tax. Would, we the tax we have so we would have a local tax revenue from that. So, but the way that the real estate assessment is is based on other like kinds of property, obviously, that sells similar or, or performs services similar to what we have. And so how we determine this tax revenue, whether it's low, medium, high, it would be based on like the value of that real estate as it relates to the use. Okay. Right, right Elaine? That's kind of partially how it's assessed? An assessor could probably provide Oh, God. We had talked right. about this so, last time, too. So. So, so the reason I'm getting at this is because, you know, I, I've spent a lot of 30 years in the retail real estate world. So... The retail real estate world, um, retailers tend to spend more money on rent than a warehouse mm -hmm. or manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, it, but that's you know purely how the and then it's assessed on that as one of the ways that it can be assessed. So it's, it's income producing, yeah. uh, you know that kind of a thing. So I just I was just wondering whether or not there was this idea of whether it was also a you know, potential tax on services and sales in the future, or is it just the real estate? Well, considering that the, the bulk of us here do not have a great deal of experience with assessment and, and so on, we talked about it last time, and okay. we did just talk about the real estate, mm -hmm. and that included um, the, the equipment, so personal property, Mm -hmm. in the non-manufacturing situation. So um, Laboratories Research cent Centers, for instance, um, talked about that as an example because they have a lot of expensive equipment and if it's not a manufacturing facility for that, those, that, that equipment um, is a source of tax revenue. Um, improvements on the property, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it was a judgment call on, okay, you know, this is a piece of property. Is it going to have significant improvements on it that would increase the value of the, the assessed property um, by having that business on it, mm -hmm. okay? So those are, those are the two major pieces of it mm -hmm. that we okay. considered, but okay. obviously w we were all you know, operating with a relatively low level of information you okay. know, background mm -hmm. on it. So, um, so yeah, I would you know very much like to hear your thoughts on it and and other people's as well. So, um, you know, we did decide to put in the zero for for um, nonprofits just to keep it out of the low, medium, high ranking, so it didn't kind of skew the low, medium, high. Um, so we did that. Um, so in and B and B was was kind of all over the. All over the place. There was, you know, it was on the lower side, but you know, it wasn't wasn't clear where we were settling. <laughs> um, and then 
car wash, kind of medium low side, gas station medium, the auto repair maintenance medium to low, and automotive sales was more medium to high, both new and used. Um, I'm curious about that one because I, I wonder whether or not the cars in inventory at lots have anything to do with the assessed tax rate. I have no idea. So, I actually have a call in to an assessor yeah. to try and get a little more input and feedback on, on how the whole thing works. I have not gotten a call back yet, but I'm hoping to be able to give you that insight next time. That would be great. Yeah. Do you I, I think that um, the reason why automotive sales new is at a higher level mm -hmm. is because when um, a car dealership is looking for property, they are willing to pay way more than used cars. I understand. So it's probably a location-based thing, you know. But yeah, you have to you have to check all the boxes. <laughs> but basically, if you do check all the boxes, you hit the home run. Right. Okay. I would right. be surprised if they paid taxes on their inventory, personally, but I don't know. Yeah, I would be surprised, too. Um, automotive rental, medi primarily medium, one, one person on the lower side said. Self-storage, medium. Dog care, low, low medium. Animal shelter, considered a nonprofit, so that would be zero. Um, animal boarding, low medium. And then the veterinary hospital was rated higher. I'm not sure, person who rated it higher, whether or not you were thinking of um, more equipment, more specialized equipment in, in that case. Yeah, That's probably. What yeah, probably. So. Um, yeah, hospitals tend to have like x ray machines and they do surgery, so they have much more, almost like what a clinic for people would have. Right, so that, yeah, that's more likely to have that kind of equipment. That's right. So conference center, medium, also recycling center, medium, low. Hazardous waste processing center, again, uh, got one high rating probably as a result of thinking that, that there might be more specialized equipment in a place like that. Certainly, um, certainly safety aspects, yeah, so. Communications facilities. I think this is a confusing one, because you know, looking at some of the other rankings as I was trying to fill these out very quickly. Um, <laughs> um, because we didn't just get, you know, mostly on one side of the equation or the other. <laughs> it's uh, everybody, low, medium, and high. Um, so it seems like communications facilities would have lots and lots of equipment, but um, I don't know. Who was thinking on the low side? if you are willing to say. Go ahead. I, I waffled on that because I didn't know whether communication facilities was like a communication facility or whether it was a Verizon brick house on the corner of Hayden Row and whatever street. Because oh, both, both yeah. of them, in my mind, are communication facilities. Right. But there would be a yeah. huge, and that's why I had so much trouble with the whole thing is if you look at anything, or when I looked at anything, it depended on whether it was big or small, right? more the size of the operation than what was actually the operation determined, not so much in the, in the tax revenue because that yeah. that's easier in theory because you compare the same size and the same things. Yes. Yeah. Um, but on the other stuff, it depends on whether it's a big hospital or a little hospital or right. you know, just the size of the operation. Okay. That was exactly what I was struggling with, filling this out, and I was starting to really overthink it. I spent a lot of time <laughs> on this, and I finally just sent it to you because I kept changing my answers, but it's, it's, yeah. there's so many variables. Yeah. There are so many variables, absolutely. I think and we might, if we look at revenue per square foot. Yeah, that's what I was about the, to say. You know, the size of the operation is, well, that'll, it'll equalize that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, and that's the tax why revenue know, part yeah. of it didn't, didn't confuse me nearly as much as the the other things. Right. And it's like job numbers, you know, we started out with job numbers and then we changed it to density because it's really about, you know, how many people in in a square footage, you know, so we can equalize it that way. Um, it might be harder to do in some of the other things um, for, for usage, so, okay. Um, so energy plant, medium to high, 
granite quarry in the low to medium and asphalt plant medium to high. So um, municipal uses, I thought this would be zero. Would it be zero? Yeah. Um, so, so sometimes, Mary, um, when a town has a use like an asphalt plant and maybe it's been grandfathered there for a long time, um, it becomes more and more valuable because you can't just pop these things anywhere. Um, but that's like virtue because there's nobody wants to permit them right. um, in their town. So it's kind of, kind of a converse way of, of valuing. It's not a high value per se, but it is high value because you can't put asphalt plants everywhere. So is it high value in, ta in terms of tax revenue because of that? Or? Probably because of the fact that it, the zoning for something like that keeps going away. Mm -hmm. Towns keep saying, no, we don't want this. So whatever town has that zoning, all of a sudden that becomes a valuable site. Mm -hmm. do, do you see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's potential. The potential, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it gets a little confusing in terms of how you look at tax revenue because it could end up being a higher value as you have more demand and less supply. Mm -hmm. But do we realize that value as a town or is it the owner that would realize the value upon sale or something? It doesn't uh, matter. So it gets assessed at that level. Okay, it does. Okay. Yeah. So it would be revenue. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. That makes sense. And then um, all of these uh, agricultural, essentially agricultural uses, um, or in agricultural in our town uses, are in the low to medium. Um, because it's primarily the real estate, just the land, a few buildings. So, not. Okay, so my intention is to. <laughs> um, when I get ratings from all you know people, that I can hopefully get a consensus. If it's if it's clearly you know all of one thing, that's that's easy. If it's there's one outlier, you know, mention that there's an outlier, but otherwise put in medium. You know whatever, whatever it happens to be, um, and then and then give you a um, conditional formatting. So there's some color coding. Of the high, medium, low, as well. So that is my intention. It's simply um, a lot of manual entry, <laughs> and I just couldn't get it done. <laughs> so there's a lot of squares. <laughs> there's a lot of squares, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and and part of me wishes there was, you know, like <laughs> um, a nice automatic way to do it. <laughs> um, but uh, but you know, this is. I think it's still a good exercise, and as Carol was saying in her message to me, it's like at least uh, at least we learned what we don't know, because <laughs> there's a lot of things about this that we don't know very well, um, but um, but it should should lead us somewhere, um, and uh, um, there's someone who just put medium to high in all the job skills categories, and you know who you are. Um, <laughs> I was like, "That's th you did just do it a cut and paste. <laughs> like, um, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to just work that into the averages. <laughs> so um, any other comments on this or things that you would want to discuss tonight? On the matrix, or other on the things? matrix, on um, on what I what I do with it, you know, what I do with the ratings from here before the next time you see it, you know, do you have any suggestions or whatever? Um, no, I'm not the currently what is there, but I, I I hope that the ultimate goal after the matrix is already narrowed down and cleaned up, and we all come to a consensus is after we decide the zones, we can figure out. What are the preferred things that we like to write? Like, what are the high-ranking ones among yes. all of us? So that's yeah, that, that's my my hoped 
hoped for conclusion as well. Yeah. <laughs> and to you know get the zoning map out and seeing where everything fits in our in our eyes and see whether or not the zoning our current zoning bylaws comply with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and some of the, the last column questions where each one belongs. Um, to figure out because I not just by definition I was looking at the map to see okay if this is uh, from what is a business district based on the how it's zoned in the current map I figured it out maybe that may not be correct that, the, uh, that was like a little bit of like for me if it was a little bit of fee because right now it's a business district but is that what it's supposed to be always right. that kind of stuff so yeah yeah I, I thought about I thought about the um, um, our favorite topic of of um, the the entertain no not entertainment what is it called indoor recreation <laughs> the apex stuff and I was like you know there's not a place in town that is appropriate for kind of strip mall type of retail oh well, we do have a strip mall I know we do. But <laughs> it's appropriate because it's right near the highway. Yeah, but so that's the only like, place that would be. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's you know it's fairly small. There's fairly there's. And it was two. a very difficult assemblage. It was five parcels. It took quite a long time to get that assembled, mm -hmm. and it had topography issues. And they came all together at a time when a lot of people weren't looking to expand. So we got what we got, but we you know it's a nice looking project and oh, it's, yeah. and, and it serves that the town well mm -hmm. and then you know there's the, the the two sides of 495 with that possibility really of retail mixed retail office usage in a strip mall type of thing mm -hmm. i mean you know i know strip malls generally have a bad name but i'm i'm just using it for outdoor yeah. center yeah. <laughs> so it. um and and there's there's a very small amount of space, small amount of appropriate use for that in Hopkinton. You know, you think about Route 9, the eyesore that is Route 9, um, <laughs> um, all the so. way through Natick, all the way to, to Westboro, and so on. Um, and But that's, that's the place where it's really good to have those types of things. That's where those, you know, high density retail, um, but we don't have one of those. And um, and I don't know that we you know it's possible to do so more than we have already in town. So and that's just an example of something that was kept coming up in my mind while I was doing this. <laughs> well, Hopkinton was lucky to have a, a developer called Tamboni come and build a bunch of buildings on South Street, mm -hmm. and those buildings have incubated and brought up a lot of companies, businesses that grew up, either went to another building in Hopkinton or went someplace else, but those buildings are very productive. Mm. They're not em big empty buildings. So we, we're lucky in that we're fostering businesses from a younger point of view to be able to grow. If those buildings were empty, they would have, there would have been somebody who would have promoted a retail use of some sort. Or, or any of these other uses we've been negotiating. Um, but I think that it's a higher quality that what we have there, given the fact that the retail use is a lower paying job mm -hmm. and the sales keep going down. Mm -hmm. So as far as entertainment goes, um, those if those buildings were empty, they would have been redeveloped into an entertainment use. Somebody would have come here and tried to figure out a way to do that, but they haven't been empty for as long as I've been here. Mm. They've, they've been f pretty much full. Okay. So when, I know that I read the notes that um, we were looking at expedited permitting, 43D, I think is a, it, I keep, and um, I'm not sure that we really need to do that. I mean, I keep hearing from, people that we're really slow in getting permits and I don't see us much slower than a lot of other towns well I actually um, last time when we were discussing it you know we we did discuss decide to at least look for what would be appropriate under 43d but 
I think most of us felt like 43D was not necessarily the way to go. It was more like, let's look at our own procedures and see what we can do to expedite permitting a little bit more, just to make it part of our normal routine processes right. to make it more efficient. 43D being, you know, very specific if we're trying to develop a particular lot or, you know. Right. So, and that that might not be appropriate. Did you not talk about uh, license fees, permit fees at the last meeting? No, I don't think so. Okay. Was it going to be talked about this meeting? I, no. I thought that that was one of the things that came up. <gasps> All right. Um, <laughs> no, I, I have heard that our fees are higher than most of the surrounding towns. Mm, I haven't. Heard and I've that. heard that from an applicant. So oh, okay. I just, they, they're in multiple towns. That's, that's good to know. It's, yeah. But I, I do, you know, feel like that that's one of the, the big, you know, longer term projects that we mm -hmm. can work on um, is, is just looking at all the aspects of permitting and, and um, approvals that need to go through for, for, you know, any new businesses or homes or developments and so on. So, so I had the pleasure of having dinner with Lynn Tokarsik. I don't know if you know who she is. She is the one who uh, shepherded uh, Lycan uh, with the TIF and, and here in Hopkinton and was very successful. And um, that is her business. It's her business is bringing uh, businesses to towns that, you know, can make the match. And so I was questioning her on what would make Hopkinton more desirable. And she said that the people who are making the decisions on these big companies are looking for work, live, and play. So where you are able to um, live and uh, walk to work, uh, not necessarily get in a car, um, but have some form of transportation that doesn't rely on you know, the suburban car situation. Um, and she gave me a bunch of people for me to you know, get together and, and ask more questions of. But the point is, is that um, if we provide that kind of product and start thinking about future of like sustainable kinds of things, that's what the millennials and the you know younger generations are looking for to put their business. It's not so much um, you know some of the other things we've talked about, unfortunately. So it was good. It was a good yeah. good conversation. And I see um, that we had success in the. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know what the name of the development is. It's uh, on Lumber Street, um, the corner of Lumber and and, um, and Main Street. Um, and that business with the apartments behind, you know, it's like I see people walking. It's nice. It's nice to see people who can walk to a store. <laughs> so, yeah, it's well, healthy, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you got the downtown, and people who live near the downtown, then they can walk. But, uh, but then that, there's that, that particular area, and that, that's good too. That's very good. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I think we're done with this for now. Um, okay. Does anyone else have um, ideas for discussion for tonight? or um, agenda items for um, an upcoming meeting? Yeah. I want to thank Elaine for sending the Hoppington Business Guide out to us, mm -hmm. which is an interesting document. I just have a couple of observations. One would be if there's a way to change the contact information on that, update it so that anybody who finds it will get current data. Obviously, you're not going to reprint the, the documents, but if it's, it's available. And when I go to the Town of Hoppington website and search for Hoppington Business Guide, nothing shows up. So I'm just, I'm just wondering, we, we have this document that's supposed to help people navigate. I know where it is. How, how do they, well, how do they find it? If, yeah. It when we went to the new website, it may have gotten so I can check on that. You would think with a search that it would be on the first page, but it isn't. So 
And how, can you think of other ways people would search for that type of information? It wouldn't necessarily be by the title, Hopkinton Business Guide, but can you think of other ways? Anyone? Uh, well, you know, it, see the top here, <coughs> it, it doesn't say, it says home departments, residents, e government visitors. It doesn't say businesses. Like I see all these websites that say businesses, and then you've got all these answers to, you know, business questions. So, yeah, having, having a business tab on right. the front page of the town website. Makes us more might, business friendly. <laughs> might help. I mean, and that, that could be a good place for a business guide to reside. Right, and a contact person, whether it's you or Elaine or you know, the town manager. It, it, it really, I mean, it's almost like too much of a maze. <laughs> but it, I think another thing is that knowing that this exists, if it's up to date, that's something that the chamber could put on their website as a, mm -hmm. as a business link for people that go to the Chamber of Commerce and say, yeah, I'd want to find something out. And I mean, that's something we could do very easily is get, get it up there. But uh, so it's a, it's a great document. It, it is, you know, it's starting to get a little dated since it's a 2016. You know, I don't, I'm not sure like, how quickly that type of stuff changes other than people. people. But yeah. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna look for Elaine. But that might be something that we, as we finish the matrix study, mm -hmm. there might be something that we could do to take a look at this business guide and, and try to guide people to certain areas that we Great. want to attract. Good, good. Speaking of that, like the, with respect to the website, I, I, I was wondering when we were talking about the job skills questions and attracting the companies, Hopkinton, by from the survey, we all, we have a, a really highly educated population, right? Yes. So if we can give uh, give them the companies have like I, I feel like like the, I notice this when I'm looking for a job, half the time I don't even know so that some companies are there in Hopkinton. Like so, if there is a way that Hopkinton companies can post post job postings for Hopkinton residents, they get a bigger pool from a higher educated population, but at the same time, it benefits both of us. Like the, yeah. I'm not no. sure how the job search. No, I don't. I, gonna, I couldn't think of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I interrupt? Mm -hmm. I just, yes, please. I just Google Town of Hopkinton and put business guide in quotes, and it's the first thing that comes up. But it's under inspectional services, and then the title of it on the page is called um, Now Posted, comma, the town's new Hopkinton business guide. So if you're just kind of scan, skimming through it, it's not the first thing you would really notice because the first two words in it are now posted. You know, so just so you know. Good. I'm gonna also mention some of this stuff to um, Amy Raderbush who was taking on a, um, the website, the town website and interface for planning board and so on so, so that she's aware of that she's been working um, on town website issues and um, with uh, is there someone on staff who's specifically responsible for that? Uh, we have an IT department. Yeah, so on. she's been working with them. Okay. Good. Anything else? Okay. I have one thing. Okay. I, I would just like to suggest that um, I think it would be worth our while to really look at the zoning on the property, the um, insurance company property? Yep, that's the um, Franklin uh, Road, it's uh, Liberty Mutual. Right, that, that has its own zoning for that one parcel? Actually, it is similarly zoned. Um, the professional office. Yes. Yeah, and that's, that seems to be like the only spot in Hopkinton right now that's big and available and has a lot of potential for good things or or not so good things, and I think it would be worth taking the time to really look at the zoning for that property and talk about what we would like to encourage down there. That's one thing that Good. we talked about at the last meeting, that if we were going to do a 43D type thing, that that parcel might not be a bad one to target. 
Right, and I think an important first step would be to look at it and, and what's currently allowed on that parcel and what we would like to include on that parcel or allow on that parcel. Okay, good, thanks. Did you have something? No. Oh, okay. Any other thoughts, future agenda items? Okay. While you were out of the room, we did approve the minutes. Okay. okay. And what else did we do? Did we do anything else while we were out of the room? No, I don't think so. Okay. Sorry for the short meeting tonight, but I, I really do feel I'm devastated. <laughs> I just feel like we shouldn't discuss something if it's not, you know, well presented yet. <laughs> so, um, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Good. We are adjourned. April 1st is the next meeting. April 1st is the next oh. meeting. April is Tuesday. Tuesday. Yep. You're going to be gone? No, I will be getting April? back that day, but did we not agree to cancel that meeting here? No, because the planning board decided that they weren't going to use that slot. They were going to um, do the start early on the on, uh, okay. on the twenty fifth. I offered it. Yeah. I offered to cancel, but um, the decision was to go with the six thirty start time. Yeah. So the only so, meeting is scheduled now is April first. April first, and then we will have to skip a, a meeting because of Patriots Day. And then um, when when it would be the next one after that? Because um, I don't know. Planning board. 29th. The 29th. Okay. The 29th. That's not a planning board meeting, right? Okay. So the next one would be the 29th. Oh, the 29th was the EHOP. No. no oh, that's the EHOP. Yeah, we can't do that. Yes. That's know your know your award or something. Candidates, so. is it? It's know your vote. Know your vote. Know your vote. April 29th. Okay, so we are we have canceled the 29th as well. No, because we discussed 29th. Yeah, that's so right. Something I was forgot. Good. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. We, we can't do the 22nd because that's planning board. Yes. And the, so the first weekend in May would also be planning board. Yes. So we're now but, uh, into the second weekend. The second. So the, the first Monday in May is town meeting. The second Monday is planning board. And the third Monday is the annual town election. Well, oh, town election, we can have a meeting. And the fourth Monday is Memorial Day. So but we, we, we can meet on election day. Yeah, we'll, we can meet on election day. We're going to have an April 1st and then, and then May and June. Yeah, no kidding. Definitely. Um, next time we meet, we can discuss whether or not there's any other options of other days of the week during April and May that we can fit another one in. Okay? So bring your calendars then. Friday afternoon at Start Line Brewing is always a good <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you'd be willing to broadcast from there too. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.